everyone. Welcome to Interfaced. With Interfaced, we take a look at um, Halborn on the inside and try to get to know the people that we work with a little bit more. I'm Arabta, and today we have got Timur from Turkey joining us in this chat. And Timur is our offensive security engineer. With that said, I'll pass it over to you, Timur. Tell us a little bit about yourself and share your story. Yeah, sure. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me here. Um, yeah, my story is like, I was always into computers. I mean, since I was a child, but actually, to be honest, before moving to cybersecurity, I, I always wanted to be a software engineer. So I basically started working towards that goal and even started working as a software engineer professionally for, for some time. But then I realized, I mean, it seems more fun to break things than build things. I mean, at, at least in that period for me. So I uh, just started doing self-learning, um, CTFs, and everything related to that. And I just landed my job in the security industry. And uh, time passed by. And here I am uh, in Halborn. Happy to be here. That's great to hear. It's always interesting how your career and your choices evolve over time. So Timur, like you got into offensive security specifically with your choices. So what does that mean to you? And why did you specifically choose offensive security and cybersecurity to begin with? Um, I mean, it, it was like no brainer to me, to be honest, when I just decided to move cybersecurity. Probably everyone who thinks about cybersecurity, the first thing that sparks in their minds, it's like, yeah, it's probably still hacking. It's uh, it's hacking things and it's fun. So yeah, let me do that. I mean, that also was for me. But if I would have started right now, I would have probably considered a blue side of things because it's a lot easier to find job on that side. Okay. So yeah. All right. Talking of breaking things and hacking stuff, what was your first hack? Or tell us about a hack that you saw and you really liked. Oh, my, my, my first hack. I mean, it was lame. I mean, the first hack is like when I was learning, I was playing CTFs and like most people, the first hack is like, um, let me go and find the outdate, outdated server, then Google vulnerabilities for that outdated server, and then just copy paste code and click exploit. That was basically my first hack. But on a more like a professional scale, my first hack was basically because uh, I've been uh, doing web penetration testing. It was cross-site scripting. So yeah, it was also a super basic one. I mean, we have to start somewhere. Of course, we all have to begin somewhere, right? <laughs> Well, one of the things uh, that I really like about uh, the team and how we work with over here at Halborn is that it's 100% distributed. We're all working. I mean, you are, you're in Turkey, I'm in Spain. We're working out of our homes uh, at our laptops. We have really adopted this 100% remote version of life and working. To you, what's that one hack or one tool or one belief system that was your favorite for doing a 100% remote culture? Hmm. I mean, that's interesting. Uh... I mean, for me, it was building a process, to be honest, because uh, when you're working remotely and from your comfort in your home, it's always tempting to just sit and just open the next tab and watch YouTube all the day. But you have to yeah. build process. Like, for instance, in my case, it's the, the biggest life hack I realized for me was opening. Uh, there, are, there are some playlists on YouTube called... Uh, music for studying or something like that they have like kind of some background noise with some isochronic sounds and they just keep me concentrated all the time i mean everyone should try it i mean i'm doing like a four hour deep work sessions and then one hour break and then repeat and that's how i work basically and yeah guys you should try that music it's amazing so focus music is your go-to then to keep you yeah. planned and focused yeah is that something that you start with in the mornings or is that something that you just play on the side? How does that go? Um, in the morning when I wake up and do like a brew my coffee and sit on the table, the first thing, yeah, I open up music and then I just start a session of three, four hours working with that music or my background. That's how I do it. Okay, excellent. So thus far, what would you say has been your top thing or your favorite thing about working at Halborn? Oh, my favorite thing. Mm. I mean, first of all, I mean, there are many things. I mean, working remotely is amazing. Uh, I like that there is no uh, micromanagement inside of the Halborn. Everyone trusts each other. 
So it's amazing. And collaboration is on point. So that's that's what I like, collaboration and trust between team members and leadership. Yeah, absolutely. Could not agree more. Okay, so that said, um, to our viewers, uh, if any of them are interested in um, joining cybersecurity or becoming an InfoSec engineer, what would be your top three advices to them? Uh, the first thing is probably build a brand around yourself. I mean, currently, uh, everyone, every everything revolves around content. So if you're an InfoSec engineer or aspiring security engineer, building a content is going to benefit greatly to you and posting, having a nice LinkedIn. I mean, it's going to just, recruiters are going to be messaging you instead of you trying to find a job. Uh, that's my first tip. The second tip is, I mean, have fun doing it. I mean, cybersecurity is hard. It's not easy. So you have to uh, get fun out of this process, learning process. And the third tip, I mean, diversify. I mean, in my opinion, you shouldn't be stuck in only like web penetration testing. Try new things. Maybe you like it more. For instance, that's uh, how I started learning blockchain because I like new tech and you can see where it led me I mean, to Halborn. And it's amazing. Of course. And you did mention blockchain. So what got you into blockchain security or rather blockchain as a sector itself? What what drives you to towards blockchain? Uh, first of all, I mentioned I like learning new tech and blockchain was emerging back then. I mean, it's still it's still super new. Um, yeah, that one. And also I checked out uh, many news around like a blockchain hacks. And I saw that they are not not any standards around how you should write things, how you should code things. And I was like, yeah, uh, I should probably try to get into that industry with my cybersecurity knowledge to solve things out. I mean, and, and another bonus, this industry is super lucrative since it's new and has nice higher salaries. Yeah. Yeah, and we're glad you're here. So uh, interestingly enough, we actually ran a Twitter poll yesterday, which was about asking the audience on uh, DeFi hacks and why do we think there's so many DeFi hacks. And one of the top answers, the most favored one, was actually that they thought there were not enough audits in the space. What is your take on this? Do you think uh, at some point DeFi will actually become unhackable? How, how do you see this whole landscape evolve? I mean, the the general approach is like um, nothing is unhackable. <laughs> like, first of, of all, I mean, there will always be some vulnerability. I mean, as long as humans write code, uh, there will be issues. We are still far from that side when AI writes everything correctly. So there will always be vulnerabilities inside. And yeah, um, lack of audit is, I believe, the main issue of those hacks. Since many projects, they just uh, built things out like in a week or two and then just release it without any audits. And yeah, you're probably reading news and you saw what's happening. Yeah, that's true. All right. Thank you so much, Timur, for taking the time out and sharing your opinions with us. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you.